copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. Broadcast 275. Regarding a suspicious person at 5 and Broadway. Assist the officer. That's all. Oh, here, here, here. Now, that'll never do. What's your name, young lady? 
Oh, Simon. Well, for your sake, we've got to think this thing out. The only people who get into trouble are the ones who don't think straight, or the ones who refuse to think of the consequences. Everybody's always telling you to think. In school and at home and every place. I can't do anything I want to do. You want to steal? I told that woman I'd, I'd never do it again. I'm telling you, I, I'll never steal again as long as I live. Now, believe me, Pearl, I, I'm not trying to be hard-hearted. But I know how easy it is to... Uh, let's talk about something else. Tell me about your home. What do you want to know about it? Why, about your father and mother and what your interests are. Well, my mother's a widow. She has to work in the laundry, and we're terribly poor. Well, I'll check up on what you tell me. But I'm telling you the truth. Honest, I am. Okay, go ahead. Your mother has to work such long hours that my sister has to take care of the baby and me. My sister's only a little bit older than I am. Uh-huh. Now, Pearl, I'm going to ask you something, and I want you to tell me the truth. I want to help you, and the only way I can is for you to have complete confidence in me. I have. You've been nice. Fine. You needn't be afraid, whatever your answer is. Pearl, have you ever taken anything like this before? Now, before you answer, let me explain why I asked. You say you don't know why you did it. Well, some people do it because they just can't help it. They're just a little sick in their minds, and they can be cured easily if we know that's why they take things. Oh, no, I never took anything before in my whole life. Honest, I didn't. All right, Pearl. And you're never going to again. And I'll take you home. Home? Oh, please, please, sir. I'd die if they knew anything about this. Don't you realize how lucky you are in being taken home instead of the police station? But Ma will give me an awful licking. I just know she will. I didn't say I'd tell them. But they'll know right away if I'm dragged home by a cop. I, I, I mean... Just what do you mean? Uh, How would they know? I, I don't know. I don't know. Come on, Pearl. We're going home to see just how much you do know. Find out what she does at night, huh? Right. 
I'll send Hazel Brown to work with you. Meet her outside the employee's entrance when the store closes and stay with Pearl until she's tucked into bed. What's the matter, Lula? Getting too old for these night watches? I am not. I just didn't buy these dandy slippers for some truck driver in a beer garden to walk all over. Beer? Don't tell me it's going to be one of those far into the night affairs. Hey, wait a minute. Here comes Pearl now. The one with the three layers of makeup. Mm, I could have spotted her without the tip. Let's look at your paper. Huh. She doesn't seem anxious to catch a streetcar. Well, well, she has a date. And at her tender age. Tender? Don't you know that guy she's talking to? No. He works for department stores, on the lookout for a young girl just out of school. Well, let's go get him. Listen, you know we can't touch him without evidence, and that's not our assignment. Sorry, I just don't like to hesitate with his type. <laughs> well, there they go. Will you bustle up another notch, Hazel? We've got work to do.
What are you tearing up those sail clips for? What's it to you? Just this. You've seen a badge like this before. Why, oh, you... Oh, no, you don't. Give me those sail clips. Hey. Hold on, girl, Lulu. I don't have to. I got the sail clips. All right, take them. You haven't got a thing on me. Those clips will add up to exactly what you had in that makeup box. The money's in a stocking now. That's perfect. Come on, Pearl. There's an old friend of yours outside waiting to see you. That's the way it was, Mr. Harris. So what? What? No tears this time, Pearl? All right, Cobble. What are you going to do about it? I'm sorry to say I'm not going to do anything. The management foolishly refuses to prosecute you because of your youth. Youth? Oh, oh shut up. I can see it won't do any more good to talk to you than it did the last time. <laughs> That's a break. You're going to be discharged without references. It would do you much more good to be put where you'd have to realize you can't get away with this forever. Oh, yeah? Yes. You're getting another chance you don't deserve. Pearl, why don't you go straight? Say, listen, you'll never get anything again, copper. I hope there won't be anything to get on you. Yes, you do not. Despite Pearl Stein's attitude, she was unheard of for over a year. Then reports of theft from department stores totaling thousands of dollars made store operators wonder if Pearl had graduated into big-time shoplifting. Among them was Lula Lane, who followed a girl and a man through the entrance of one of the largest stores. Marie, come on and take a walk with me. We may have some work to do. Sure, Lulu, but I thought this was your day off. Sure, it is. But that's Pearl Stein ahead of us. She's with the fellow with the one arm. Does she have a record? Not no price that I know of. We've been wondering about her case. They're heading for the dress department. How does she work? I don't know what her style is now, but she knows me, so I'll go over and wait by the door. I get it. If she lifts something, I'll give you the business, and you nab her if she goes out. Yeah. Huh? If she goes in the dressing room, get chummy with the boyfriend. It'll be easy to. <laughs> I'm practically in his lap right now. And even though it does cost $500, it'll make me look just marvelous in my next picture. Don't you think so, Charles? Sure thing, honey. Why don't you go tie it on, maybe? I think I will. The dressing room's right over here, miss. May I help you? Oh, that's all right. It won't take me a minute. I know I'm going to like it. I'll be right back, Tom. I'll be here. Will you excuse me? I have another customer. Sure. Okay. I'll have a smoke. Oh, excuse me, but could you tell me which way the dressing rooms are? Huh? Oh, sure thing. Right over there. Oh, there. Well, I was told to meet someone, but I, I don't see them. Well, maybe they'll come along later. Can you have a seat? <laughs> Thank you. Cigarette? Oh, you're very kind. I don't imagine you're alone. <laughs> no. Not in this department. <laughs> I bet your girl's buying a wedding gown. Mm, no such luck. She is getting a swell outfit. She's got a contract for pictures. Oh, how marvelous. Mm -hmm. And here she comes now. Where's the dress, honey? I left it in the dressing room. Who's this thing? Mm -hmm. She's just waiting for somebody. Ah, clerk. Yes, sir. I'll take that dress. But I just remembered I have to be at the studio in half an hour. Uh, will you take a deposit on it? Certainly, ma'am. Where is it? I left it in the dressing room. Here's five dollars on it. The name's Pearl Stone. Come on, honey. You'll be late. Oh, oh, may I walk to the entrance with you? What? I always wanted to talk to an actress. No, we're in a hurry. Just a minute, Pearl. Huh? You? Yeah, me. Up to your old tricks again, huh? Nothing you have to face old... Say, you haven't got a thing on me. Well, we'll see. What you get, Marie? Plenty. It's a new gag on me. Well, I'll be... I left that dress in the dressing room, so you take your paws off me. She wasn't that fat around the waist when she went in there. So well, that's it. You wrap the dress around your waist under your own dress. Huh? Listen, that isn't the dress under there. It's me. Okay, then you must have eaten it. And that's against the law, too. Come on. <laughs> Stein pleaded guilty and was sentenced to six months in the city jail, her youth acting in her favor. Upon her release, she was watched every time she entered the store. Pearl was now a master lifter and was fast becoming an expert criminal. If you're going to do any shopping in this store, Pearl, I'm going to come along and help you. I don't need any store to help me shop. Well, just the same, you're going to get that kind of help every time you go near anything that can be picked up. Save a lot of time. Tell me I can't even go in this drugstore without one of you rats following me. I'm just curious about the number of times you go in drugstores. This makes a ninth one today. All right, Sue. You'll find out anyhow. I want a ten-cent bottle of Paragoy. Paragoy? Say, are you drinking this stuff? No. Well, watch my feet in it. And if I remember 
Mildred, that wasn't the hat you were wearing when you went in the store. I just bought this hat, Copper, so you can get your hands off me. You didn't buy anything, Pearl. But you did put your old hat on the rack and walk out with this one that you'd been crying on. Oh, yeah. And what's this bulge under your blouse? If you're putting on weight there, it's a mighty funny place. Come on. Oh, all right. What's the difference? I might as well be in. you head for when you got out of jail the second time is a dress store. I've been out three months. Hey, listen, who are you anyway? I don't believe you know me at that, Pearl. You're too hopped up. Where are you getting the stuff? I don't know what you're talking about. I work in this store. Oh, so you work here. Well, tell me why you were heading for the entrance with that dress over your arm. I was going to the buyer's office with it. My mistake, Pearl. But if you go out that door with that dress, you'll know how long you'll go up for this time. Well, there she goes, Hazel. She's so high she doesn't even know what she's doing. Let's go get her. All right, Pearl, just hey. take it easy. Hey, get away from me. Hold her in, Hazel. I've got her. Hey, I'll get you for this. I've got Hazel. Take that, I've got her. Got her. Little... After serving her third prison term, Pearl Stein was not seen for over a year. Then, after arresting two men who had been systematically robbing public telephone pay stations, Detective Harris went to an apartment on South Main Street in search of the man who had been making master keys to the coin boxes. With him went to Detective Lieutenant. Guess nobody's at home. Uh, maybe it's a break. If it's past you, we can look around. Well, I don't see any key making machinery in this room, boys, anyway. Me neither. Wait a minute. There's somebody in the next room. Well, I'll be. Pearl Stein. What are you doing here? Open that door, Pearl. Come on. You can't get out the back way. Well, you're going to open it? All right, let's break it open. What'd you throw out that window, Pearl? What's it to you, copper? Oh, you haven't had your shot yet this morning, have you? You're in a bad humor. Well, we'll just have to go down and see for ourselves what you threw out. No, no. No, don't do that. Oh, don't do that to me. All right, then suppose you tell us what this is all about. Well, well, I've been living here with Ed Farley and his wife. Yeah, go on. I didn't throw anything out the window. But if you find something down there, you'll think I did. Oh, stop beating around the bush. I don't want to go up for that. Oh, you just can't send me up for it. You've got to give me a break. What are you talking about? I threw about 60 of those master keys out the window. So you're mixed up in that racket now. No, no, I didn't have anything to do with it. I'm just living here with Ed and his wife. Well, what are you getting hysterical about it for, then? Because I... I threw something else out. Oh, you've got to give me a break. If I went up for that, it'd kill me. What was it? Hypodermic needles. Four. Four hypodermic needles. So you're peddling dope. No, no, I'm not. Oh, you've got to let me go. You've got to. I can't stand it. Shut up. Now, listen to me. First, I want to know about Farley and these keys. If you're not mixed up in that, why'd you try to get rid of them? Well, come on, talk. Tim and his wife have been nice to me. I was trying to protect him. All right. Now, I'll tell you what I'll do for you, Pearl. I'll give you a break if you tell me where Farley makes his keys and where I can get him. How do I know you'll let me off? I've always been on the square with you, haven't I? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Then go ahead and spill it. Well, I don't make the keys. A guy by the name of Jim Chandler makes them. I'll give you his address. What was Farley doing with them? He was selling them to young punks for $25 a piece. He's only sold two so far, I know that. That's a break for everybody. Will Farley come back here? Yeah, he'll be here. Oh, but you got to let me get away first. All right, Pearl. But we'll get you sooner or later if you keep on peddling that stuff. I won't do it no more. I promise. Yeah, yeah, I've heard your promises before. It just happens that I couldn't have sent you up for that anyhow today, or I would have. What do you mean? I'd have to get you in the act of peddling it or catch it with it on you. And you made me rat on Ed. Why, you double crossing heel? Oh, no, no, I'm not. I told you you'd go in for it sooner or later, and I'm probably saving Farley and his wife from becoming addicts. If they're not already. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. I'm going to go east, Mr. Harris. I'm going to try to get a new start. Well, I'll hope for a miracle, Pearl. But I think you gave yourself your last chance when you decided to live your own life. You've been living it. But I don't think you're going to much longer. Pearl Stein did leave Los Angeles. But instead of going east, to a new start in life, she went to San Francisco. She found new companions, and the only change she made was to switch from morphine to cocaine. Quicker, quicker acting, more responsive to her deadened nerves. 
in a large building, a doctor greeted a new patient. Can you come in, please? Sit right there. Doc, I don't feel so good. I feel like... Well, sometimes I think I'm dying. Yes? Go on. I don't know what's the matter with me. I've never been sick before. Young woman, what's the real reason that made you come to me? I don't know. I don't know. You know as well as I do. Yeah, I know. All but you've got to do something for me. A sanitarium is the only place that can do anything for anyone in your condition. No, no. No, you've got to do something for me where I'm not locked up. It's the only solution to your problem. It's the only hope. And frankly, I can't guarantee the results of that. Oh, uh, well, well, all, all right. I'm sorry I covered that. Don't you even want to try to do something for yourself? Yeah. Yeah, of course. My, these instruments are shiny. What do you call this one? That's a scalpel. Please put it down. I'll bet it's sharp. I'll bet you could kill somebody and I can easy with it. Will you please put that down? No, I won't. You know what I'm going to do with it? I'm going to I'm going to cut your face to ribbons. You're crazy. Yeah, that's it. I'm crazy. That's what's the matter with me. I've been that way for a long time. So don't you think you better do what I tell you? Yes, yes of course I will. Uh, anything at all. Well, then, listen. You're going to give me treatment. And you're not going to say one little word to the cops. If you do, I'll get you. I'll kill you. I'll kill I, you. I, I, won't, I won't go to the police. I promise. You, you promise? Yes. I'll have you all fixed up in a jiffy. Now, just go out in my waiting room. Leave the scalpel here. There. That's fine. I'll be right with you as soon as I call a special nurse for you. You're very nice, doctor. I made a promise once, but I didn't keep it. Give me the police department, quickly. I heard that! Say, you're not going to do that to me! You can tell the rest when they get here that you've killed me! Come away from that window! Get back, I tell you! Remember, friends, all automobiles look alike in the dealer's showroom. It's what goes into the gas tank and the crankcase that makes the difference. And to make certain that the difference is in your favor, see to it that your gas tank gets real police car performance, real grandy crack, that your crankcase gets real lube, or real grandy Pennsylvania, the motor oils that can't be broken down by engine heat are slowed up by the coldest kind of weather. And now, Mr. Harris. And thus, Pearl Stein ended her career of crime. Hers was a life that was completely wasted. The story proves again that crime is a losing proposition. Thank you, Mr. Harris.